Hello everyone, I'm going to be reading chapter 17 of The Last Kids on Earth, so let's get started. Batten down the hatches! There are hatches? Not that I know of. Jim rushes around the treehouse in a panic. Below us, I spot Dirk running for Quinn's garage workshop. Entire trees are knocked down, ripped from the earth, as acid bark stomps closer. His thick black claws swing like great blades. June's face is so white, it's nearly see-through. Let's keep running, she shrieks. We can't stay. He's going to rip this tree house from the ground. But we can't do that. I can't do that. Because see, here's the thing. Here's the truth. This tree house isn't just any old tree house. It's my home. The first time in my life, I have a real permanent home. And Quint and June and Dirk, for the first time in my life, I have real friends. Permanent ones. Not going anywhere ones. A family. Everything I was ever jealous of. Everything those other kids had when I felt like a crummy orphan. Well, now I have it. Sure, it took the freaking monster apocalypse for me to get it. But there's no way I'm losing it now. Not to this big jerk. We don't run. This is our treehouse. No one messes with our treehouse. I grip the treehouse railing. Acid Blarg's next step crushes the fence around the backyard. Another crushes our wooden pipe things. Outer defense is breached, Quint hollers. Unleash the little hug monster stopping juice grenades. So, a fact about little hugs. They're the best. If you've never had them, get them. They're sweet and delicious and taste like sugary chemicals. And when they're empty, they make for perfect monster stopping juice grenades. Quint concocted a killer recipe. Little hug monster stopping juice grenades. Lemon juice. Trevec skull lies dead tied. Extra strength dandruff shampoo, pop rocks, honey Dijon salad dressing, mayonnaise. Acid blurred howls as the liquid grenade concoctions crackle against his hardened head. He claws at his sizzling skin. Jack, the second catapult, Quint yells. You, um, you guys have a second catapult? June asks. Duh, I say with a grin. Then leap to a dangling rope and swing around to the other side of the treehouse. There, Quint has a giant branch pulled back and tied to the floor of the treehouse deck. The second catapult. The catapult basket is a rusty old refrigerator box, stocked with crud from around town. Bike seats, microwaves, bricks, car doors. Time to unleash the junk! I bring the losable slicer down, hacking through the rope, and junk attack! Bling! Crash! A whole double ton of junk nails acid bark on the nose. A bucket of bowling balls slam into his belly and the hideous beast howls. But still, this unstoppable evil keeps coming, marching forward like some murderous monster machine. I'll distract him, June shouts. She leaps swinging on the escape rope, out and over the yard to the roof of my neighbor's house. I grin. June's a natural. Hey, monster face, get a life! Acid Blood turns his big head to June. That gives Rover the opening he needs to jump in, diving at Acid Blarg's feet, digging his thick fangs into the monster's leg. Acid Blarg roars and reaches down, scooping up Rover and hurling him. Smack! Quint and Rover tumble over the side of the treehouse. Rover yelps as he hits the ground. Quint lands hard on the grass. I hear him go, oof, as the wind is taken out of him. I'm spun aside. The loose well slicer slips from my hand and sticks into the grass. Just inches from Quint's face. We can't keep this up much longer. But then, the cavalry has arrived! Pick on some of your own size! Dirk is armed to the teeth with Quint's insane inventions. He flings four razor frisbees through the air, then unloads with the explosive football launcher. Blam, blam, blam! The hits muddle acid Blarg's monster brain. He takes an off balance step forward into the moat pool and. The splash! There's an ear-splitting crack as Acid Blarg's giant, tree-trunk-sized ankle snaps. The monster is wounded. This is the moment. Post-apocalyptic action hero Jack Solomon's moment. Quint, I call down. Let's play catch. Quint on the grass looks up at me, confused, and then, ding, he gets it. But you can't catch, and I can't throw, he shouts. Today we can. Today we will. Quint nods once, hard. He scrambles to his feet, reaches out, and grabs the loose slicer. His face is pale. 
sweat pouring down his forehead. We have one shot at this. I charged across I charge across the treehouse, take two steps on the diving board, and shout, Now! Quinn throws the loose slicer. I jump up, hanging in midair for a moment. The bat spins up, up, up as I'm hitting the board, and then I'm springing into the air and got it! I grip the handle tight as I'm twisting my body, turning in the air as I pull the blade and skitch! I slam the loose slicer into the scar on Acid Bark's giant monster forehead. He howls. I'm dangling from the blade, gripping tight as the monster's legs give out and he comes crashing down, 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 and boom. That's it for chapter 17. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.